What's going on YouTube? This is Dave Maximilian here with Magic Mike. Um, today we're going to be taking a look at his Beretta 92FS on what comes in the box, a little bit of history on it, and then we're going to take it out and do a, a shoot review too. So if you want to learn more about this, don't go away. All right, so let's take a look at what comes in the case here. You obviously get a nice hard case with it. Um, you have uh, the gun itself, and I'm just going to lay this on the table. We've already done a chamber check. It is free of anything in there. But you get, obviously, one mag is in the gun itself right now. You get a second mag here. You get a nice little pocket for earplugs, things like that. And you get, of course, the lock. In the top edge of the case here, that's where you're going to find uh, brush instructions and some other miscellaneous stuff that you, you might use. But it'll all fit in the case there and nice and neat. Now, I'll tell you, this was, this was the first gun I'd ever bought. Um, and I obviously had used other people's guns, but this was the first one that, that I was gonna drop some money on. So it, when I went to the gun shop to buy it, I, I decided on a 9mm because the round is fairly universal for a number of uses. If you want to take it out target practicing, personal protection, any of that is pretty doable. Now, due to just to the size of the gun, you're probably not gonna be concealed carrying this particular gun. However, you can still holster it, still use it for personal protection. Um, one of the uh, things that was very impressive to me, or one of the first impressions I had when I ha was in the shop, I took it in my hand. Being this is my first gun, this is going to be my baby, I wanted to make sure that I felt very comfortable with it. And when I took it in my hand and I held it, um, I do have fairly big hands. I was very impressed with the grip of it. It was big, but not too beefy where you felt like you couldn't totally wrap your fingers around it. Um, I was very impressed by the weight and the balance of this gun. It just felt very, very comfortable to me. And as a first time gun buyer, that was very important. Um, so that was one of my first impressions. It just, it feels weighty. It feels well built. Um, you know, I've probably put somewhere around 500 rounds through this thing so far. And again, we'll take it out and do that shooting review. But I've probably put around 500 rounds through this thing so far and never really had a problem with it. Um, I have had a couple of uh, jams up here in the chamber as it's chambering, but that was because my form was off and I was releasing my wrist rather than keeping my wrist locked as I shot the gun. Limp wristing, basically. Yeah. Yeah, and so that was my own fault. Um, other than that, I mean, this this gun, as we uh, will tell you in the history part of everything, is a fairly durable gun. Um, honestly, I've probably uh, put some rounds through it when it was probably, uh, probably should have been clean. It was probably a little too dirty, but... Uh, never really had a problem with it. Uh, very, very durable. Very, very happy with the gun. If, you know, I guess one of the ultimate uh, telltale questions you might ask yourself is, if I were going to buy a gun today, again, would I go and would I buy the same gun? And my answer to that question is yes. Now, Dave's also shot this gun. One of the other things I will say before I hand this off to Dave and give him an opportunity to also um, say a few things is the trigger pull distance on this. It's both a double action and single action. The trigger pull distance on this thing, especially in single action, I feel is very, very comfortable. Um, you know, it, it, just, it just is. Um, feels very, very natural. So I'll give this off to Dave. Like Mike, how he said his hand just fits the, the grip really well. I got to agree with that. I like how the grip feels too. It's very ergonomic. It feels good. It sits in the hand well. It points well. Um, the stippling on the grip is not bad. It's not too aggressive. It's not too um, smooth. 
it it does feel but it very still well. gives you that tactile feedback you still got that texture on there right right um i like here on the front how it's got a little bit of uh grooves going there too to help kind of get a grip on it and then also on the back strap it's got the same style as what the front has um the trigger guard up here in the front is textured so that way you can you can you can rest your finger on that and it just kind of helps to control the gun in the front stay on target um feels really good the slide's got some serrations here in the back uh no front serrations on it i do kind of find that because I'm used to handguns that don't have this decocker. When I go to chamber around, I kind of find that I'm kind of fumbling with my my index finger and my thumb around this decocker. I kind of it's a little bit slower. I got to think about it just a little bit more when I go to chamber that round. Uh, that's mainly due to the fact that I do not have any single or uh, double single action handguns. Um, at all the only the only hammer fired handguns i have are revolvers which obviously you know you don't have to to rack the slide to chamber around um but otherwise it feels very very good in the hand very ergonomic the sights i love the sights it's they're they're dot sights you got two in the back you've got one in the front i prefer those sights actually over over anything else um it's way more ergonomic than a glock uh you know it I kind of like the feel of a 1911 a little bit more, but there's I would I'd be used to this and probably within a hundred rounds of firing it. Uh, it's a great great handgun. And one of the other things I like about it, and it's a very small detail, but I like the fact that on the slide release lever, you got just a little bit of a shelf there, so that you can really feel it with your thumb or whatever as you reach up to release that slide. Um, again, small detail but I really like it. Compared to some others, you don't have quite a big of, of a shelf area there for you to actually get that tactile feedback without like looking at the gun. So uh, it is a nice little touch. Yeah, the magazines release really well. They spring out at you. you. It's not one of those that you have to, you hit the magazine release, it comes down, you have to shake it to get the magazine out. I like that. It springs out very nice. Um, yeah. You got anything else to say? I think that's about it. All right, so we'll go into some history on this, so don't go away. The Beretta 92 is a series of semi-automatic pistols designed and manufactured by Beretta of Italy. The Model 92 was designed in 1972, and production of many variants in different calibers continues today. The Beretta 92 was designed for sports and law enforcement use, and due to its reliability, was accepted by military users in South America and other countries all over the world, including the United States military. The re United States military replaced the M1911A1 45 ACP pistol in 1985 with the Beretta 92 FS designated as the M9. The Beretta 92 pistol evolved from earlier Beretta designs, most notably the M1923 and M1951. From the M1923 comes the open slide design, while the alloy frame and locking block barrel, originally from a Walther P38, were first used in the M1951. The grip angle and the front sight integrated with the slide were also common to earlier Beretta pistols, what were perhaps the Model 92's two most important advanced design features had first appeared on its immediate predecessor, the Model 84, which was chambered in 380, back in 1974. These improvements both involved the magazine, which featured direct feed. That is, there was no feed ramp between the magazine and the chamber. And when we get to taking this, this pistol down, taking it apart, I'll show you exactly what that means. In addition, the magazine was a double stack design, a feature originally introduced back in 1935 on the legendary Browning High Power. Now the FS models are a double action, single action trigger system. They have an initial double action trigger pull subsequently followed by single action operation. The FS models have a safety lever that also functions as a decocking lever. So let's get into what all that basically means. Okay, so before I get into what this decocker is and what it does, I'm gonna go ahead and do a quick safety check for all of you. Uh, magazine's empty. There is nothing in the chamber. It's empty. So we're safe. 
All right, so the decocker. Sorry, this is going in and out of frame. Um, this is what's known as a decocker. It's ambidextrous. It can be used from both sides. And basically what it does is it decocks the hammer, releasing the firing pin um, as, as the, the guns form a safety. So you load your magazine up. You put in your gun. You chamber around. And you notice that the hammer is cocked. You want to holster this and you want it to be safe. So what you do is you hit this decocker. It drops the hammer. The round is still chambered. It can't go off. You go ahead and you, you slide this into your holster. You go to draw the gun and you're going to fire. You need to disengage the safety slash decocker and then you're ready to go. And that first shot is going to be a double action trigger pull, a long trigger pull. The gun goes off. And then after that, each round is a single action. Like so. Or what you can do is when you pull it and you go to use it, you can manually, you take off that decocker slash safety, you can manually pull back the hammer, fire it, and then of course every round after that is going to be a single action. Um, here on the left side, you got your slide stop, you got your, your magazine release, which I just released that magazine, did that on purpose. Um, it can be switched to the other side with, with some tools. I'm not going to go ahead and do that on camera, but it can be switched to the other side there. Um, the takedown of this is extremely easy. It's, one, it's probably one of the easiest out there. I love it. Um, you've got this little, this little push button right here on this side, and then this pin over here. You just push that button, and as you can see, that pin starts to come out. Then you just slide that down. Your barrel and slide come off of your, your frame. And then you move your, remove your recoil spring and you pull your barrel out. And then you've just got your slide and your barrel. Um, now, the, one of the distinct differences on a Beretta 92 over a lot of other uh, firearms out there is this barrel. Look at this thing. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about that. It's got some moving parts in it and all that and it it just it's very different looking than your conventional barrels um now this is called the falling locking block design which provides good accuracy and oper operability um especially if you're using a suppressor and because of that is because you have inline travel of the barrel it just it's a it's nice straight shot with the slide you don't get a lot of tilting going on, and it just it aids well in reliability and accuracy. Um, one of the good things about the Beretta 92 is that the, the barrel is hard, uh, hard chromed, which it's chrome lined. Uh, it helps with overall reliability and durability. You don't shoot the barrel out as fast. Um, now, the Beretta modified the Model 92 SB slightly to create the 92 SB-F, which later became known as the Beretta 92, um, which is what this one, the Beretta 92 FS. Um, the F was added to denote entry of the model in the U.S. government federal testing by making the following changes to the, to the firearm. Uh, the design of all the parts were had to be 100% interchangeable to simplify maintenance in large government organizations, basically. Uh, they squared off the front of the trigger guard, which is right here. They squared off this edge right here so that you could use your finger to support for easier aiming. What you do is you just kind of rest it right there, and it helps with, with better aiming. Um, again, I already mentioned that they, they chrome line the, board, the, the barrel and the surface coating on the slide is called Brunetin, which allegedly provides better corrosion resistance than the previous just plain blued finish. Um, and that's, you know, that's pretty much it. It's, it's a pretty straightforward design. It's very, very reliable. Um, it's been around for a long time. It's tried and true. Um, there's just, there's not a whole lot that can go wrong with them. They're very reliable. Uh, 
assembly is is just as straightforward as disassembly. You put your barrel back in like that and do it so that everything doesn't go sliding out on you. You put your recoil spring in like that. Sorry, this is getting out of frame. I'm actually behind the camera while I'm doing all this. You slide the, the, the slide back on, put your takedown lever back in place, load your magazine, do your functions check, and that's it. That's all there is to it. So we're gonna go out and shoot this thing and see how it does, so don't go away. All right, what's going on YouTube? This is Magic Mike here, and this is gonna be the shooting review of the Beretta 92FS. Uh, we're gonna put probably 150, 200 rounds through it, see what it does, so don't go away. First thing we'll do is obviously load it up. Chamber around. At this point, we need to release this little safety on the top. Now we should be ready to fire. We're out. So, release the magazine, pop another one in, slide release, good to go. And we're out. Uh oh, this is what happens when you don't turn the safety off.
All right, so I'm not sure exactly how many rounds Mike put through it because we kind of lost track. We were just having having a good time. The thing just it shoots like a dream the, from that one mag that I put through it. Um, but what do you think, Mike? What what did you what did you notice about it as far well, as recoil and stuff like that? You know, recoil, and it's just a thing where I truthfully probably need to take this thing out more often than I do. I love this gun, but. I, you know, because I'm an inexperienced shooter overall, I need to take this out and and just do a little more shooting with it. The one thing I will say is that I have a lot of confidence in this gun. I've, like I said, never had a problem with it. And so when I load it up and if I'm operating it correctly and remember to take the safety off and everything like that, I know that she's going to fire and she's not going to have any problems whatsoever. And, uh... That can give a shooter, especially an experienced shooter like myself, a lot of confidence in what they're doing. Um, one thing, again, and it's because I'm inexperienced as I do it, but, and this is not loaded and the safety's on right now, but as I put my finger on the trigger and I pull for a repeated round, sometimes what I'll end up doing is my trigger finger will travel down here to the bottom edge of the trigger. And this happens with not just this gun, but just about every gun I shoot. And we'll start then to rub on the bottom of the trigger guard. And again, that's a form thing on my part. But as far as the gun is concerned, man, I love this gun. I could sit here and put rounds through it all day. Did you notice any hot spots as far as on the grip? You know, it's a little bit warm out here today. And, and the grip is a little warm. Well, but, like, a, like a hot spot, like, like you're holding the grip and as you fire, the grip is rubbing on your hand in no, a certain area, no, that, creating not kind of a hot spot. Not at all. Um, right here on the crease of my thumb here, right mm -hmm. here, where it goes in the back, it felt really firm, really comfortable there. Um, again, we talked about the little uh, texture on the grip. That was not a problem whatsoever. Uh, again, it feels good. You know it's there, uh, but doesn't get in the way. Gotcha. Okay, so as kind of a new shooter, I mean, not a new shooter, but in in the in kind of the shooting field, you're just kind of getting into it a little bit, I guess. Um, would you recommend this gun to a new shooter, or would you would you kind of steer him in the direction as far as something that's a little bit simpler, that's not a double single action, just single action only, like a striker fire or a revolver, something like that? Well, in some senses, maybe you would go with a single action. Um, just, just to make it a little bit simpler as far as the operation goes. But, again, the thing that I really like about this gun is how it's balanced, the weight of it. That part as a shooter makes me feel very, very comfortable. You might go instead with something like a, like a single action just to make it that much more simpler. But if you have enough familiarity with the gun, um, if you do enough with it, I think that's something you can overcome. Okay. Well, and I noticed, too, you're talking about the weight. I noticed it helped a lot with felt recoil and you didn't have as much muzzle jump right with, with something like that versus you know a glock or that sky pistol that right sky pistol is really snappy just because it's lightweight i really like the weight of that too like you're saying and we're gonna do we're gonna do a review on my glock 45 here coming up but to compare that to this you definitely don't have as much muzzle travel as you fire off around with this as you would do with that glock with for me gotcha Cool. What else? I think that's it. All righty. Well, I hope you liked this video. I hope you learned something. Uh, please feel free to leave comments in the section down below. Uh, we'd appreciate it if you like, share, and subscribe, and we will see you later.